Okay, finally, back in front of the camera after two weeks of audio only. Thanks for putting up with it. Now you can see my lovely face again. We are again talking about a 2004 French film. This time it's the chorus or Le Choriste. Let's get into it. Guys, I know it's another old one. I know some of you will be wanting me to do newer series and movies, but I do see the value in doing these older ones because it was before the internet was so common that there were lots of video reviews, so there's not many reviews of these kinds of films, and this is a pretty good one. Even though it has nothing to do with the very long engagement other than being French and being set in the past, I kind of associate the two. I think I saw the preview for this film when I saw a very long engagement and I've always kind of put those into the same category in my head. Like I said, even though I associate them, they don't really have anything to do with each other. This film, for example, is a much, much cheaper production than A Very Long Engagement. A Very Long Engagement was, at the time, the most expensive French film ever made, and I think it may even still be. The chorus is noticeably cheap in parts, especially when you watch it today. For example, the top of a lot of the shots, the sort of top 10% of it, is quite fuzzy in a sort of chromatic distortion kind of way. I'm not sure exactly what's happening, but it's very noticeable when watched on high-res screens today. But with this film, don't let that put you off, because the chorus is a very simple story, and it's sort of charmingly simple, and it wouldn't actually match if they put that together with a very obviously high budget and elaborate long takes like they did with a very long engagement. This film, everything about it, the acting, even the music to an extent, although the music is very good, it's all quite simple and pared down. To summarize the plot very simply, an unmarried, unattractive, middle-aged man with not a lot on his horizon is posted to teach, or more likely discipline, at a behavioral correctional school for boys. So it's not an ordinary boys school, it's basically for boys with troubles. A lot of them are orphans and even those who aren't just behave badly and there's very little going on in the school except what they call action reaction. So the boys do something wrong and they get punished badly. However, when this teacher, our protagonist, shows up, he's not particularly convinced by the principal's methods, and he discovers that some of the boys have a bit of musical talent, and he is an ex-musician, so he tries to nurture that talent and change their lives through the power of music. It's not dissimilar to something like Dead Poets Society, except that it's a little bit more cutesy and it's much more based on music. It is a charming film, it's sort of fairy tale like in its over-the-topness. For example, the school that the boys attend is the French for the bottom of the pond, as if a school could ever really be called that. But it gives us that overwhelming sense that really it'll all be okay. This is really just a sort of fairy tale, it's not actually a real threat. Musically, it has to be a little bit like a fairy tale as well, because if you know anything about real music, you'll find the depictions of the choir quite unrealistic. For example, the boys will start singing all on the same note without having been given a lead-in note. Little nitpicky things like that, I'm not really bothered by them, I'm just saying that musically it fits into that fairy tale thing of this suddenly all just working out somehow. One of the other stars of the film, you might even argue the main character, is played by 14-year-old Jean-Baptiste Monnier, and he was chosen for the role because he's actually a soprano, or at least he was at the time, and you can really tell that's a very nice touch, because although some of his acting is a bit weak, sure, most of the important parts of his acting involve him singing, and I don't know if you've seen other films with singing in them, but if they're dubbed, it's normally quite easy to tell, especially with this kind of high soprano classical music style stuff, and you can tell that it's him. It's quite obvious, and he's got a beautiful voice, and on top of that, the music in this film is gorgeous. It's obviously the best part, as in, I say that objectively, but I'm saying that when you watch this film, it very clearly strikes you that the music is better than the rest of the film. It's one of my favorite film scores. I have it myself. I have the soundtrack for this film. I listen to it a lot. It's gorgeous, and it really fits that fairy tale kind of vibe, because it sounds quite a lot like Danny Elfman's score to Edward Scissorhands. So it's for those reasons that I like this film, the chorus. However, watching the film today, 
It doesn't feel like it quite nails its own simplicity enough. It isn't enough about the music and we don't really get the musical payoff that we feel the film deserves and we don't get enough crisis leading up to that to do with the music or any one character that we feel we really need to get sucked into this story. Additionally, there's just not enough music. There is a lot of music in this film, don't get me wrong, but it is called The Chorus. It should be more about the music than it is. Essentially, the composer, Bruno Coulet, should have been the one behind the actual story here, which, as I said, is not complicated, but it could have been and should have been even less complicated. And I'm not saying the composer should have actually written the story, but his music should have taken front and center stage and it feels, the music that is, a lot tighter and more cohesive than the rest of the script. So it should have been allowed to just be the centerpiece of the film while the story just basically slotted in around that because there are some character arcs, I'm gonna say, and just weird little developments and weird moods in certain scenes that just don't belong. And I don't mean to say that the film is too long. In fact, if anything, I think it's too short. There could have been a fair bit more development with at least two or three more characters. There's just a few other characters with whom we get development and we didn't really need it. And that's where the film feels like it goes a little bit astray. And I've got to say it's a little bit of a shame with this film because although it is a nice film that I do enjoy watching, especially for the music, it feels like it's really very close, just a touch more shaping to becoming one of those classics that makes you feel warm and fuzzy every Christmas like It's a Wonderful Life or Edward Scissorhands. So how do I feel about this film? It's a little bit of a tricky one. Basically, I think it's an okay film with an excellent soundtrack, but it really was very close to being one of my favorites. If you like the soundtracks for, say, Edward Scissorhands, The Nightmare Before Christmas, or even Amelie, I think you'll love the music to this film and I think you should check it out. Otherwise, I think there are much better films out there with which you should spend your time. Guys, if you like foreign series and movies, then make sure you subscribe so you can see new reviews coming out every Friday. Also, if you like languages and you're interested in learning languages, then check out my main channel, Days of French and Swedish, where I discuss how I learn languages and I do progress updates. For example, the last video I put on there was very long and it was entirely in French. It was a huge amount of work to film, as you can imagine, but I do want to show that I'm doing this for real and not just pretending I can do it. So. I think it's an interesting channel at least. I do hope that those interested in language learning will also think that. Thank you so much for watching my review of the chorus. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye.